item number 10, VA 2022-09. I'd also like to state for the record, if my commissioners to my right will stop their sidebar conversation. Um, I'd also like to state for the record that Commissioner Steve Miller will recuse himself from agenda item number 10. All righty. Is that in this building? Goes past it's, 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. It's this building. Yeah. Who are you heard? Uh, only if the sheriff says we're going to be with it. I'll make a motion. The door the alarm goes off at 8 o'clock. Okay. All right. This um, is not a conditional use request. This is a rezoning request by T.W. Payne. Uh, for property located on James Road, it's a bit larger. It is almost 67 acres. Um, it has also a very interesting history. The zoning map on your screen, also in your packet. Property zone planned mixed use district. That is an old defunct zoning district from before the LDR. This was approved in 2007, um, tied very tightly to a conceptual master plan um, that is also in your packet, that we'll get to in a moment. That uh, zoning approval in 07 was for all of this blue area that you see, plus the darker shade of red that's noted as CH. And that was called the Market Street Master Plan. There was an awful lot of discussion in the community 15 years ago when that was happening. That was a large development that never got off the ground. The only thing that has changed is the rezoning of that CH property that you see in dark. Uh, that, you may recall, was a few years ago. That was for Quick Trip uh, with a proposed truck stop that has gone through planning review but has not full permits for construction yet. Um, because of PMD zoning from the past, and remember we do not do plan development with a zoning change anymore, but it was tied to a master plan, which means if you do not build exactly what that master plan says, you must rezone the property um, back then, it would have been an amendment to the master plan, although on today's zoning rules, it means a zoning to something else, which is why the truck stop had to zone to something else. In this case, it is sort of the southern third of the property. Um, the applicant's proposal is to develop this as mostly single-family residential subdivision under R6 zoning and leaving a strip of commercial zoning along James Road. Character area, um, neighborhood activity center that limits the type of commercial zoning that can go along James Road. Um, something staff wants to check into about changing, but this part of James Road, strangely enough, is designated as a local street, which makes no sense at all, but that's the designation. Um, it needs to change, but and it probably will in the coming year, but there are several other roads in the community that have a similar problem. Um, but in the meantime, it limits to neighborhood commercial zoning only as the maximum that can be sought. They originally were looking for CC or CH zoning, which is probably a better fit for the area. So character area, as shown, aerial imagery highlights that nothing has happened here in more than 15 years. It is still forest just like it was back then. Um, some points of reference, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, that's the Toyota dealership that's along James Circle. That's sort of the closest urban development nearby. Existing survey boundary um, shows Riverside Road. It's a dirt road cutting through the center. The applicant was planning to vacate and close that road to make way for their new development. The zoning pattern they're proposing, you see the limited acreage along James Road for CN. I think that's about 200 feet of depth off of James Road. Um, subject property along James Road looks like this. Uh, four lane road um, divided with sidewalks, trees on both sides, very little activity. This is the dirt road running through the center. Very, very rural looking. Hard to believe that at this point you're less than a half mile from exit 18. Very sharp contrast here. Again, James Road near where the dirt road comes out. This is looking north. The Market Street Master Plan in 2007. This was the middle portion of it. 
Um, very intensive, very urban development, mostly shopping centers, um, large anchors, and then some high density residential around it. Um, if you look in the lower parts of the screen, you see a lot more green and rooftops. That was where most of the residential was to be located. In your packet, it describes some of the magnitude of this development. It was over 500 dwelling units and 1.3 million square feet of commercial space. Um, pretty intensive. To give you a comparison, Valdosta Mall is, I think, about 800,000. So much more intensive. Zoomed in, I did a comparison of the subject property, which is the large box on the south, and then also the smaller box to the north, which is where the truck stop is now being proposed, and that was the property that was rezoned. So this is to show what the proposal in front of you would be displacing out of that approved master plan. Fifteen years gone by, nothing has been built, very unlikely that it would ever be built, However, even with that truck stop rezoning, conceivably someone could come along, acquire the rest of the property, and pretty much build the same master plan as was approved in 2007. However, my opinion is once this bottom third goes away, we have effectively torpedoed the 2007 master plan uh, to the point that it's going to be beyond working around. So it effectively ends it. Um, so, do a comparison as to what was proposed 15 years ago versus what's proposed for the same property now. Those numbers are there in your packet. And interestingly, it is almost the same quantity. Applicant is proposing more dwelling units than what this was showing back then, um, but also less commercial space than what was shown back then. You can see approximately half of this area was slated as residential high-density residential. Those lots that you see that are empty are R6-type lots. Um, they're about 60 feet wide, but they are a little bit deeper than standard. They're mainly nine to 12,000 square feet each. However, uh, some of those are duplex lots, so do the math. You cut it in half, you get five, 6,000 per uh, dwelling. And a lot of townhouses, um, either as townhouses or apartments, it's hard to tell but you see that all those are clustered. What's interesting to note is this is a very creative layout, mixed use, um, well organized in terms of future streets, site amenities. The applicant's proposal is more conventional looking. R6 neighborhood, lots lined up mainly in rows, standard 6,000 square foot type lots. The commercial zoning you see in yellow, no specific plans for that, but simply to be marketed as commercial lots with James Road frontage. One amenity feature of any size is the southeast corner of the property. That's where you see the green and the blue. That is a wetlands area in blue, and they're proposing to augment that and do a shared community space around the perimeter with some features that are there. Um, also note on the upper left corner, you see three of the streets stubbing out into other property. Um, if you go back to the zoning map, that would be the rest of that blue area running westward, which is planned mixed development, um, has the capacity of a few hundred or a couple hundred more houses. It would go down as far as the floodplain boundary of the Wifflacoochee River, and also terrain drops off pretty steeply there. Um, they have a concept for that, but they're not pursuing that because that's an awful lot of development at one time. So all they're really asking is to rezone this front portion um, to accommodate this master plan here, showing about 200 houses or a little bit more um, with amenities and some commercial space. A footnote, um, a very important one, what is before you is a zoning change. We're not here to approve a subdivision plan or even this as a master plan, but simply to put a zoning category in place where right now PMD is very, very, very restrictive and locked into a master plan. Um, footnote on some of these lots, 6,000 square feet is a 6 to be a 1 by 100 on a corner lot. Makes it hard to fit even a smaller house. In all likelihood, they will need to increase the size of those a little bit, which probably means a loss of a few lots um, if they stick with this kind of pattern. 
Um, I wish they did something a little more creative to replace something that was creative, um, but they're requiring, they're not required to, and the possibility is still there, even if we zone to R6, that they come back with a more creative layout for a neighborhood. Hopefully they'll take this as some kind of inspiration. So with all of that, because of the pattern of the area, which is just about a blank canvas, um, its proximity to exit 18, speaks to more intensive development, including residential being high density residential as opposed to R15. So with all of that, um, staff is recommending approval of the zoning change as presented. We want to answer any questions you might have. This is a lot to take in. Yes. Uh, I'm referring Matt to the uh, zoning location map, which I'm holding up here. I'm seeing four areas that are designated as PMD. Do those all belong to the current property owner, or is it different? Uh, they did at one point, and I think they still do. Um, the applicant could address that. It's all part of the same master plan from 15 years ago. <coughs> left of it. If you look on the right side of this master plan where it fronts I-75, you see the large pink building. Mm -hmm. That was the Bass Pro Shop. You know, she said was. <laughs> was. <laughs> Still could be, but was. <laughs> All right. Well, I have commissioners that are doing lots of little sidebar conversations that kind of slow the progress. So, all right, any questions for staff before we move along? I ain't talking to you. Any questions? All right. Just, well, I do have one, sorry. Uh, you said we are not approved, approving a plan development plan. Correct. This is a simple rezoning from PMD to R6 and CF. So as shown if by if that map right there. They have to come to you again with the, for the plan development. If, it's only if plan. they want to pursue plan development approval, once it's rezoned to something, then it becomes eligible. Um, otherwise, if they want to pursue conventional development, then they simply go through the subdivision process. Very good. Okay, we'll open it up. Is there anyone tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this uh, case?
developed to have the capacity uh, to, 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 to build around. <coughs> so um, I do want to point out, and I'm, I'm glad Mr. Martin emphasized this, I mean, this, this is not site plan specific. Uh, we're not looking at a, we've got a conceptual plan, but that conceptual plan could change by the time we get to, to develop it. Um, it is conceptual in nature, that's all it is. So I don't want anybody to get too stuck on what you're looking at here as a conceptual plan. Um, one other thing to point out is that there's about, there were about 157 dwellings in this area of that PMD zone, about 375,000 square feet of commercial space. Now we're looking at about 200 dwelling units, about 100,000 square feet roughly of commercial space. So I, I, I do think it, it could be argued here that this is a town zone from, from what was proposed. Now that was one big master plan, but even looking at this sector of it, I think it can be argued this, was, this is a town zone with R6 and CN. So um, this is in the Neighborhood Activity Center. Neighborhood Activity Center, you know, seeks higher density housing with R6 housing. A mixture of uses with uh, retail, commercial, and residential, and community center open spaces, which, which we propose here. So it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. County planners recommended approval, and we ask that you follow uh, the recommendation and approve uh, for the R6. CNJ. I'll be out to answer any questions. Commissioners? First, I got a question. related to this. I was going to ask since you've been there. So, uh, I know some people live in the villages, and of course, it's a nice, a huge 55 year old <coughs> retirement. So, how do you structure something when 41 year old Sally moves in with 64 year old mama with her 11 year old daughter and mama dies and she don't move back. What do you do with that? That's a good question. It's <clears throat> something that I, I haven't been retained to think about right now. <laughs> 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 we're we're, we're going to get there. Can't get there. You can't get there. Commissioner Bailey. I got I like this one is bedtime. I do have some uh, house plans and some house designs if, if anybody would like to look at those as to you know what would go here uh, for these houses. How do you pass those around? Again, okay. any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Nyman. All right, is there anyone else tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request? Good evening, Matthew and Advanced Engineering Services. And on the call, I'll make I'm the engineer for project. If there's anybody has any questions, for the engineering side. <coughs> um, Matt, they may come, this is a local road one. I'd argue for all the reason it is a local road, the traffic counts are so low, he doesn't qualify for a major collector, he needs to collect the rack. So he's just, the development's not there for what we built for it. Um, I actually helped design the road. Uh, 15 years ago, so um, it's been a long time coming. And, uh, I'll answer any questions the board has. Thank you. Are you speaking on behalf, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, come around. Opposed. Are you po opposed, sir? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma uh, once again, uh, William Morgan. 2181 uh, Smith Street. Okay. The residents of the River Hill and Jones community, mm -hmm. which is on James Road, uh, we support the rezoning. However, we do have some conditions uh, we'd like to have approved uh, with this rezoning. Uh, we're, not, we're not sure of what um, organizations or other entities that can uh, come on James Road. But I'd like to just share in behalf of the community, and we have all agreed to this uh, in terms of um, we requested no nightclubs be in this area. Now remember, there's a church right across the street uh, from the area that we are thinking about rezoning. Um, no bars. 
package for liquor stores, cigarette wholesale stores, vaping stores, adult stores, or storage units to be permitted uh, in this particular uh, area. Um, also, uh, one of the other conditions that I'd like to present um, uh, in terms of a condition to approve this rezoning is that we take another critical look uh, at closing uh, Riverside Road. There are um, families on Riverside Road. There is a, a historic cemetery on Riverside Road. Riverside Road uh, is the artery that we use to get from Highway 84 to 94 without going through a whole lot of um, traffic. And so that road is, is being used constantly uh, because I use that road on a daily basis. So we are in support uh, of the rezoning request with those conditions as to what can, once the subdivision um, uh, is there, um, what uh, can be approved to be there in terms of nightclubs, bars, package stores, uh, and the other things that I've mentioned. Some of those are allowed in CN. None of those are allowed? No. Uh, one of the main di interesting differences between CN and CC, remember there's three main yeah. commercial zonings. This is the bottom of the food chain. All forms of alcohol sales, whether it be package or pouring, not allowed okay. at all. Um, I thought storage units were allowed. Many warehouses are not allowed okay. in CN zoning. Adult stores not allowed in any of those commercial districts. Okay. That requires its own zoning district. Vaping, the city has a moratorium on that right now. Okay. Um, only thing that might possibly be allowed, cigarette wholesale not, but a convenience store that sells cigarettes, yes. Um, a nightclub certainly comes with alcohol, not allowed. Okay. So, so, Mr. Morgan, it looks like you're covered. Great. Um, the convenience stores, we have plenty of those already. <laughs> so when the, um, somebody comes up uh, to ask for uh, a license for a convenience store, uh, that should also be denied uh, simply because on both ends of James Road, on the south end, uh, Highway 84, there is one, and certainly on the north end, Highway 94, uh, there are seven. Okay, duly noted. All right, thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. All right, we've exhausted our time on those wishing to speak on behalf. Is there anyone tonight wishing to speak against this request? My name is Daryl Dove. I live at 2829 Hunter McCormick Road. Seeing this plan right here, I understand you are Reverend Morgan, and I understand the minister that got to get in the book about this. But when I see this right here, it's right in front of my church that I attend, and this side of it where that water is, is right in my front yard. It's just right across the street. And I look at the damage that was done when they widened James Road. I heard somebody say that there's no traffic density. You don't live out there. That's right. A few weeks ago, we met down at Thomas Chapel. And I explained to them down there where they're building that truck stop or whatever it's going to be. When we come up to make our right turn to 94, we can't see. And the traffic coming from Moultrie or wherever it is, it's not stopping anymore. They said, oh, we'll see about it. And it's still a black, it's still a black fence or whatever it is, but we can't see. And it's throwing your life in danger. And this is just the beginning. Boy, that blows my mind. We're this far from this wall to this wall from that development right there. When we leave church on Sunday, 
we can't even get out of the day right now. I don't like it. I know who, um, the guy who, this is a, it's not even a plan. It's just an idea. They could change this in six months and say, oh, we're just going to put these huge houses up here and cut down on the senior citizen. I'm a senior citizen according to this. And I can't even afford it. What is a Bucci Corp or a Bucci Corp? I have no idea. Um, and I've been around a long time. But this, I can't agree with it. Has any of you on this panel up here ever tried to drive James Road? Every day? I do it every day. I do it every day. <clears throat> Tomorrow, come with me at 8 o'clock in the morning and try to check on the St. Augustine Road. Ride in my car. It's almost impossible. Do you do it? Unless you're sitting in a high top pickup truck. <laughs> yeah. This is not going to be as peaceful as that design. I was able to every day out there. Right across, right on James Road, right in front of our street, front of a corner. They've dug, when they replaced James Road, they've dug in this one spot four or five different times. And suddenly, when you go to church and show them my baby, they look, it's cracking up again. See, now they've got two cones out there. James Road leaks water all the time. And we're talking about putting 500 houses or whatever it is in there. This is not good. I vote against it. But I respect Reverend Morgan and what the rest of the pastors agree with. I don't like it. Thank you, Mr. Dodd. All right, is there anyone else like wishing it. to speak against this request? All right, then I'll turn it back over to the commissioners for any final discussion. I'd just like to one point of clarification. Matt, the Riverside, current Riverside Drive will no longer be accessible from James Road except for, for what? That's well, not by virtue of a rezoning. Remember, you're not approving a master layout, you're not approving a road closure. That's right. a whole separate that would be a process separate request. that has yet to even be asked for. Um, the road right away, like you saw, was a dirt road. Okay. That segment of Riverside is still there. Of course, yeah, I know. Um, and would become an issue at time of planning. Um, they could leave it open and maybe volunteer to pave it, or don't know. It's in the city limits. Okay. Um, so this does not require the total abandonment of that road? So no, it, the only thing that would require the abandonment of that road is to implement that. Mm -hmm. Because you don't see Riverside cutting through here. Mm -hmm. So that pattern displaces it. Okay. But again, we're not approving a pattern. One thing to note, Riverside is paved for part of its journey. If you look back at the aerial, in the lower left corner, you see the intersection of Riverside and McCormick. Mm -hmm. It's paved northward up to that intersection and then eastward over to James, mm -hmm. is the way I recall it anyway. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see the brown of the dirt road north of there. I'm pretty sure it's just dirt other than Hunter mm -hmm. McCormick is paved. Hunter McCormick, so the Riverside going south is dirt. Yes. Okay. I knew it was a long time ago. I thought maybe the county had paid it. Okay. Just one of the questions. The, the Paul, I think it's referred to as Paul Bear Church. Paul Bear. Is that in, inside this proposed development or outside of it? I don't see it on here. It's not on this parcel. I don't know where that church is. Well, it's on Riverside. It's on Riverside. Well, it's, it's a couple miles of it before you get to USA Pool. Yeah. Well, probably one of the rest. Mr. Morgan, do you know where that church is? Uh, there is no river. Uh, there is no church. It's the Paulberry Church. It's the Paulberry Cemetery. Where on Riverside is it? Um, it's just a little bit south. It's in the county. It's just a little bit south of this. Okay. Further towards 84, I guess. So. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit south. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. If there's no other discussion, I will ask for a motion. Madam Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Wiles. Uh, our guard just filed VA 202209 um, for this um, 60, almost 67 acres that we've been discussing at length. Um, 
as was mentioned earlier, this is a down zoning, and uh, it looks like all of the concerns that uh, were mentioned as uh, possible conditions are not going to be able to uh, be placed on this property anyway. Uh, addressing Mr. Dove's concern, if this were developed as currently zoned, it would be a more intense zoning than this request. And uh, so for these reasons, I would like to recommend that we recommend approval. Okay. We have a uh, motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Second by Commissioner Jefferson. Is there any discussion on that motion? All right. All those in favor of the motion to approve, please raise your right hands. I'm sorry. I want to make a comment. Certainly. As far as the cemetery is concerned, nothing can happen to that cemetery. It's, it's not on this piece of property. Yeah, yeah. But at any rate, regardless, even if it got to that point, the, the law does not allow anybody to mess with it. No, of course. I just want to make sure it wasn't contained in here for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion to approve, please raise your right hand. One, two. Okay. All approving. And then we have um, Commissioner Miller abstaining. Oh, you're against. I'm sorry. Did you get that training? Okay, and that motion will carry. Okay, let's move on. VA 